to the submissions by my learned friend. There is no denial that has come from the from council's defense that senior counsel Honorable James Orengo is here on pro bono basis. That evidence has not been brought. That claim has not been denied. He's therefore here as counsel earning a fee. And that is what section 26. Senior counsel, don't go to that line of argument. If the evidence of him acting pro bono has not been laid on the table, has the evidence of him earning been put on the table? Mr. Speaker, sir, the only presumption. No, we are not going to presume facts. We are not. Mr. Speaker, sir, I am well guided, but may be noted and may go on record that the grounds laid by Section 26, Subsection 2, have not been rebutted by the submissions made by Council insofar as the gainful employment in these proceedings is concerned. Number two, he is here as a governor of Siaya County, not as a senator. And as such, this, the petition number three of 2013 is distinguishable from the fact that he's here as a serving governor. And that is what section 26, subsection two, speaks to and that is also equally the, the provisions of Article 77 of the Constitution. Further to that, Mr. Speaker, sir, the test of prejudice is a creation by counsel. It is not the one that at Section 26, Subsection 2, and uh, Article 77 speaks to. The only test is gainful employment. Unless that one is rebutted, uh, rebutted, the general presumption again, your lordship and uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, and that is a legal presumption. Unless it is rebutted, is that he is here for a main purpose to earn a living. Mr. Speaker, sir, I leave that to the House to make a determination. Permit me once more to move the House with my last and final application. Yeah, in so far as Mr. Speaker, sir, these proceedings are in issue. Mr. Speaker, sir, on the 8th of October 2024, this House was served with a resolution from the National Assembly by the Speaker of the National Assembly, via the letter, the letter that the Speaker of the Senate referred to. That letter, Mr. Speaker, sir, appears at page 547 to 548 of volume five of the National Assembly's bundle of document. There is no, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, we were then served with two sets of documents, an affidavit dated the 11th of October deponed by one Peterson Jomo Mushira. Our objection, Mr. Speaker, sir, is that that document, that affidavit, did not form part of the documents that were submitted by the Speaker of the National Assembly to the Speaker of the Senate. It's our argument, Mr. Speaker, sir, that this is new evidence. Further to that, Mr. Speaker, sir, we were equally served with a bundle of document from the National Assembly, which is labeled as Volume 8A, which is also indicated as responses from various government agencies. Again, Mr. Speaker, sir, this is new evidence that does not find itself at page 547 to 548 of the bundle of documents submitted to you or to this Honorable House by the Speaker. The prejudice, Mr. Speaker, sir, is that our response was exclusively limited 
to the documents that we were served with. Further to that, your, your Mr. Speaker, sir, it's our argument and our application that these documents will prejudice our case in the sense that, Mr. Speaker, sir, they will violate our rights to a fair hearing. This is trial by ambush by the National Assembly. It's a tradition of this House, Mr. Speaker, sir, and I refer to the findings of this House in the Honorable Governor Sonko in a ruling delivered by the Speaker of this House on the 17th of December, which ruling barred the County Assembly of Nairobi from introducing any new evidence. It has been the tradition of this House to protect all the parties that appears before it, so that, your, uh, your Mr. Speaker, sir, justice will not only be done, but we also seen to be done. We move this House to have these documents expunged from record, and the, country, the, the National Assembly be barred from relying on these documents. Mr. Speaker, sir, if these documents will be admitted, we shall suffer prejudice in the sense that we shall have no ability or we shall have been denied an opportunity to respond to the same. We urge you, Mr. Speaker, sir, to hold that these documents is new evidence and we rely on Rule 19 of the, this House rules. Noting that, Mr. Speaker, sir, the rules guiding this provision, uh, these proceedings today do not provide for how to deal with new evidence as and when the same is brought to the attention of the House. However, the rules guiding the proceedings in the impeachment of a governor or deputy governor provides that new evidence shall not be admitted. Further to that, Mr. Speaker, sir, permit me to bring to your attention the findings in the case uh, in the civil appeal number 21 of 2014, which was the case of Governor Wambora versus the County of uh, Assembly of Embu. Mr. Speaker, sir, in that case, Justice uh, um, Diek, may the Lord rest his soul in peace, uh, Chief Justice Martha Komi as then, she, as, as then was, and Justice Vishram held that these proceedings of the impeachment of a president or deputy president are paramateria to the impeachment of a governor. That is to say, they are identical. So what applies in those rules in the impeachment of the governor can equally and should equally apply to these rules. And finally, this house being a house of record, then we are bowed by our previous presidents. I am most obliged.